All right, so we got our patient here. Uh, she's been complaining of some sort of chest pain, shortness of breath, maybe feels of some extra heartbeats or whatever. So we're gonna get an EKG and I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. So first thing, obviously introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Dr. Perkins, how are you doing today? All right, uh, next what you got is you got your EKG electrodes. And so what you wanna do, ideally when you put it away, you don't want a kind of braided rope like this. So you want ideally, each of these things to be separated. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So you got to uh, unwind these things and make it nice and smooth. So we're going to assist our patient in lying back. All right, ma'am, can you lay down? All right, so she's laid down. Um, what you're going to do is you got these alcohol swabs and you're going to swab the inside of her wrist and ankles. Uh, and the reason being is our body has natural oils. Uh, one thing she does have a smartwatch on. Can you take it off, ma'am? All right. Uh, and the reason being is the natural oils of the skin and so on will actually stop the uh, EKG machine from working. Alcohol swabs are pretty cheap. Uh, be sure to use them liberally. You're doing a little bit of pressure when you're uh, scrubbing back and forth because you want to make sure all those oils come off. The next thing you want to do, all right, watch out. We're going to pull this tray out right here. Uh, and the reason being is people, you think that your heart's like super strong because it's doing all this work. Your heart's actually really small. So if you were to take a fist like this, you see where my uh, fingers are touching the palm of my hand? That's about how big your heart is. Yeah, so very, very small. Uh, obviously, your hands are a little smaller than mine, so your heart's going to be a little smaller. Right. Um, and so I love that because it really is a great picture and it is individualized per person. All right. Next, we're going to do the same thing here on the inside of her ankles. All right. Um, and so another thing you can look for when you're down there is any sort of edema and that's kind of swelling in your leg. So, you know, she might have heart failure or whatever. And so when you're squeeze, right, you're going to now squeeze like this and hold it for a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what's going to happen is you're going to kind of feel the skin like settle and you can have this huge thumbprint that's kind of dented in. That happens, that's pitting edema. Okay, so now that the alcohol is dried, what you're going to do is you're going to put these electrodes on. Um, now, a lot of students are like, All right, wait a minute, how do I hook this up? Um, and so the big thing is it's going to make it nice and easy uh, for you. It's going to tell you what goes with where. So if I put this down here, right, the wires are going to go up. And so I want this to face down because my wires are coming from down below, right? And so if I have this tab facing up, if I have this tab facing up and the wires pulling back like this, it's going to pull those electrodes off the skin. I don't want that to happen, right? I want the wires to pull my electrode this way onto the skin. So it's keeping it nice and stuck. So nice and stick there. All right. All right, nice and stuck there. Now for the ankles, I'm having the tab face up towards her head. Why? Because it's coming from above her. And so once again, I want it to pull it onto the skin so it's making it stick, not making it unstick. All right, so I'm gonna put that there. All right, put that there. All right, now we're gonna go here and see what we have. All right, so this says LL. This says left leg. Now, the next the mistake that students make is that they say, oh, this is my left, so that's the patient's left. Well, no, this is your right leg, right? So if you're looking your patients in the eyeballs, right, your left is their right, so cross your arms, right? But if your eyeballs are looking the same way as the patient, so for example, me and her were looking the same way, this is my right, that's her right. This is my left, that's her left. And so watch out for that. The number one reason I see messed up EKGs in this class is students are getting the right and their left mixed up.
Now this says LA, that's short for left arm. So uh, you can always make sure you got your right and left uh, correct a couple of ways. Uh, you can say, all right, ma'am, can you raise your right arm? All right, uh, you know, you can always do that. Make sure your eyes are um, looking the same way as, as theirs. Uh, and so you want to check that a couple of different ways because as that, that's the number one reason I see for a messed up EKG is the student got the right and their left mixed up. Right, and then RL is short for right leg. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hook up the electrodes to the chest. All right. So now that we got the limb leads hooked up, we need to hook up their chest. And so one of the things you want to remember is your orientation. Don't lose your orientation. If you get that messed up, uh, you're going to lose. Now what you're going to do is here's the collarbone. And so you're looking for what's called the sternal notch. You're going to feel a bump right here in their chest. Um, and so right here, the first squishy space that you feel below that is what's going to be the second intercostal space or the second between the rib space. All right. So now we've got the third between the rib space and the fourth between the rib space. So if we're the fourth intercostal space, we're between ribs four and five, right? And so because I'm at the fourth intercostal space and I'm to the right of the sternum, right? So here's your sternum right here. I'm to the right of that. I'm on the right sternal border. I'm going to put my electrode right there. Now my V2 uh, is going to be the exact same song and dance as V1, but instead of on the right, it's going to be on the left right here. And so you look at this, it's going to be the same height there. Now the next thing we're going to do is right here, here's their collarbone. This is called the clavicle. And so what we got is the mid clavicular line, the middle of the clavicle line. So we're going to follow the straight down here. And so we're going to go to the fifth uh, intercostal space. So we're between ribs five and six right here. And once again, we're in the middle of this clavicle right here. So this is going to be V4. So one, V1, V2, V4. Uh-oh. What about V3? V3 is just going to be right in between V2 and V4. And so we want to center that going to be vertically, right, up and down, and horizontally, left and right. All right. Uh, now, what about a woman? So for women, you're just going to work around the breast, right? You're still going to use the midclavicular line, but if they have breasts right here, you're not going to put the electrode on the breast because breasts don't move electricity very good. Right? If you got a man with huge muscles, same idea, right? You're going to treat him like a woman. You're going to work around those muscles because the muscles don't move electricity very good. Is we're going to go for the front armpit line, right? Now that's called the anterior axillary line. And so with your patients that are thicker, right, you're going to fill the chest. So you see where this chest is starting to really curve right here? This is going to be your front armpit line. And this is going to be V5. Now V5 is going to be right in line with V4 in terms of vertical up and down the chest. Now V6, the way uh, I tell students to do this is this is the mid axillary line or the middle armpit line. So once again, just like how you found V4, I'm sorry, um, V5 where the chest started curving this way big time, you're going to do that for the V7 where the chest is curving back. Right, and so between the back armpit line, the posterior axillary line, and the anterior axillary line, the front armpit line, you're going to have the mid axillary line. And same thing, your V4, V5, V6 are going to form a straight line that wraps around the chest. Now, uh, some of the students are like, wait a minute, all right, which way does this tab go? Does this tab go down or does it go up? Uh, and the big thing I tell with my students is, you know, where do you have your wires being placed at? So here are my wires right here, and I got them down here. Uh, we'll just hook up V2 for the sake of argument. So you guys see, I'm going to pull this tab back here, 
and you're going to see these clips are going to open and close. So this is going to pinch on my electrode. And so I'm going to go under here, get my tab, go up, and it's going to pinch. And so now this is holding nice and tight, right? And so this is kind of how you want this, right? Nice and line here. What you don't want to see is, let's say my electrodes are up here. You see the problem with this? I'm already starting to peel off that electrode. That's not good. So wherever I have my electrodes placed, I want them to pull them down so they're helping it stick onto your patients. And so yeah, you're just gonna hook them all up right here. This is gonna make it nice and easy because this will tell you exactly what electrode to use, right? This is gonna say V2. And so you're gonna do that for all of your electrodes right there. So next we have the EKG machine itself. And so the first step, turn it on. So you're gonna push this button that says on standby and the machine is going to do some checks, make sure everything's working the way it should. Now in an emergency situation, you're gonna push EKG twice. And it's going to take a couple of seconds. So what happens is remember, as I said, your heart is really light. Your heart's about 300 grams. Well, I sure hope my patient has more than 300 grams of muscle in their arms and legs. So one of the things you can do to prevent any sort of artifact is you can have the patient put their hands under their butt. So uh, ask your patient, ma'am, can you put your hands under your butt real fast for me? You know, or sit on your hands. So once you have the patient sitting on their hands, I tell the students to count to 10, right? Why? Because the EKG is recording 10 seconds of the heart's electrical activity. So you want to count really slow. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 10. And what you're doing is you're giving time for all the artifact that's something that we're recording that we don't want to record to clear. And so you're allowing uh, Susie's wiggles, when she was putting her hands under her butt, sitting on her hands, um, all that stuff to be wiped out. And so what you're seeing is good, clean, crisp data, right? We're seeing what's actually going on in the heart and not Susie wiggling. All right. That concludes today's episode. If you liked what you heard, be sure to click the subscribe and like button down below. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or if there's any particular topic you'd like me to create a video on, let me know in the comments down below. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.